Welcome to the complete guide on starting a Minecraft server in 1.21.7. We're going to take you through the entire process here. We're not just going to be linking off to port forwarding and all that. It's all going to be covered in this video from start to finish. Let's get started. First things first, you're going to want to check the description of this video or the pinned comment because all the links that we're talking about here are located there. And First things first is this one, the server download link, which will take you to this page. It's our text guide on getting a server. It covers vanilla, modded, and plugin-based servers. So whichever one you want, we've got you covered here. But on this page, click the download Minecraft button to go to the official server download page. On this page, click on this Minecraft underscore server 1.21.7 link, and the server download will begin. You may need to keep or save it right like so. Now, I do want to mention that this server is not a 24-hour server. It's only up and running when your computer's up and running, plus it's on your own internet connection and computer, meaning you're going to need a pretty good computer in order to run this server and play Minecraft at the same time. On top of that, anyone who joins this server can figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates because it is hosted on your IP address, which people can use to find your location. But what if you don't have to worry about any of that? Well, that's where our company's Simple Game Hosting comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your very own 24-hour DDoS-protected Minecraft server for you and your friends. At Simple Game Hosting, you don't have to worry about port forwarding, you don't have to worry about security because your IP address isn't given to everyone, and you don't have to worry about hardware because you're running Simple Game Hosting's hardware, which is meant to run Minecraft servers. Plus, you can easily install mods, one-click install hundreds of mod packs, and there's even expert live chat support to help you out because if your server has an issue, you don't want to have to fix that yourself. You want some support to get that up and running, and that's where the live chat support team comes in. So go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below. The breakdown.xyz slash simple to start your Minecraft server in just a few minutes rather than having to port forward and go through this whole guide. Nevertheless, if you want to use this guide, you've downloaded the Minecraft server.jar from this website by clicking this link, and now we can go ahead and minimize our browser. What we want to do is create a new folder, so right click new folder on our desktop and name this Minecraft server 1.21.7, and I'm going to name it full guide. You can really name this folder anything, but this is where all of your Minecraft server files are going to live. Then you want to find that server.jar that you downloaded and drag that into the folder on your desktop. Then open this folder and you should be able to double click the server.jar here. It's going to attempt to start, but it will fail. And that's because we need to agree to this ELA.txt. If you don't get any of these files and folders when double clicking the server file here, that's because you need to get Java, which is linked in the description down below with our in-depth guide on getting it. Once you've got Java, you'll also want to run the jar fix. This is going to take the jar files on your computer, like that server file, and link them back to Java once you've got it. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser, and what we want to do is open this ELA.txt file once we've got it. This will open in Notepad, and you can change EULA equals false to EULA equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that, assuming you agree to this Minecraft ULA. Go ahead and click File, Save, and it will save the EULA file, and now when we double-click that server.jar, your server is going to start. And you can actually join your server at this point, which I would recommend you doing. Making sure you can join, making sure there's no lag, all of that stuff. And then we'll talk about how your friends can join the server. So I'm going to go ahead, open Minecraft, and we'll quickly join to test this server. To join this server, all you're going to want to do is go to Multiplayer, Proceed, and then Add a Server. For the server address, or the server's IP, you're going to enter localhost, all one word, exactly like that. Click Done, it will resolve, and you can double-click to join. You'll see us join in here on the left-hand side, and we're now online. Now, if you can join this server, you can run around, all of that stuff, there's no lag or issues, we can go ahead and let your friends join. And to do that, we're going to need to port forward, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of the server here. We can also go ahead and stop the server, but I want to mention this server console real fast, because this text box here is where you can do things like op you and your friends. So you could op, and then whatever username you want to give operator permissions to, and that's going to allow you to do things like game mode creative, as well as ban players and stuff like that in-game. Plus, we can also stop the server by coming over here and typing stop and hitting enter, and that will shut the server down properly. You can also change some of your server settings, like this server.properties file here, by opening it with Notepad. And once it's opened with Notepad, you can change all sorts of stuff, like difficulty, as well as, you know, enabling command blocks, your game mode that's set by default when people join the server, and even whether or not you want your server to be a hardcore server. Make sure when you're editing this, you save the file, and you will need to restart the server by stopping it and double-clicking that server.jar for those changes to take effect. But for your friends to join, we want to go ahead and open up command prompt. So we want to type in CMD and open up the command prompt here. And then in command prompt, we want to type IPCONFIG. IPConfig, exactly like that, and hit enter. 
It's going to give us a bunch of information, but we specifically want to open up Notepad, and in Notepad, we want to type out two specific numbers. One is our IPv4 address, which in my case is 192.168.1.84, and then we also want to get our default gateway, which is going to be this string of numbers here, which is 192.168. Dot one dot one. If yours is number and letters, get the one that's just numbers. That's what we need. It's usually going to be on the second line under default gateway. But with that being said, once we've gotten these numbers, we can go ahead and open up our browser and then open up a brand new tab in which we want to go ahead and paste in our default gateway, which is 192.168.1.1 in my case. We hit enter here. After typing in your default gateway, you're going to get some sort of a login box. This is your router's username and password that you'll use here. This is different from your Wi-Fi password, and we have a guide in the description on how to find it. Usually, it's going to be on your router somewhere, a sticker with the router's username and password. You can also try the default password, which you can get from this website here. This has common passwords and usernames that are basically the default things for all sorts of different routers. With that being said, we can go ahead and log into my router. Once you've logged into your router, it's going to probably look different from mine, but that's okay because we do have a guide on how to port forward on any router. Specifically, this video walks you through a lot as well as this text guide, and I'm also going to be giving you some common terms. Most likely, port forwarding for you is going to be under, well, just port forwarding, or it's going to be under apps and gaming. It can also be under an advanced an admin or a security tab. I've also seen it under a firewall tab, but that's less common. For me, it's under advanced and then advanced again and then port forwarding slash port triggering. No matter what though, what you're looking for is port forwarding. Then we want to go ahead and add a service to port forwarding. If you just have a big long list of boxes, by the way, just use the first box. We want to go ahead and add a port forward. For the name or ID on your port forward, we just want to make that Minecraft. For the protocol, it's going to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or literally, it could just be the word both. Then for anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, you're going to enter 25565, right like so. So we have external port 25565, and then we have the internal port 25565. For the internal or local IP address, this is going to be that IPv4 address you found earlier. So in our case, 192.168.1.84. You may instead have a big list of dropdown with all the devices on your network. Here, you're just going to want to select the computer that you're starting your Minecraft server on. Same thing as entering in this IP address here. Now at this point, we go ahead and click apply, click save, all of that stuff. And now all we need to do is get our public IP. Now, this is covered up for you. All you can see here is 1.8 for my public IP because, well, you don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. And, well, I don't want to give it out publicly on a YouTube video. However, you can also see some of the information, which is also covered up for me, obviously, but that people can get with your public IP. So keep that in mind. And that's why it's so important that if you want to have anyone join this server, you want to get a simple game hosting server because it's not necessarily good for everyone to have your IP. We can go ahead and click to copy this, though. And now we can go ahead and minimize our browser and open open up Minecraft. We also want to make sure that we start our server by going here and double clicking that server.jar. So once Minecraft is open and the server is started, we can join this server just like any other Minecraft server by going to multiplayer. And then we want to add the server. Now I'm going to name this the public IP because that's what we're going to be using here. And we can paste this in. Now you can see 1818 at the end there. And that is because everything else is covered up. I don't want to give this out to everyone. Like I said, it's very important that you only invite people you trust onto this server. Click done and it will resolve after a few seconds, at which point you can double click on your public IP to join using it. Now, I do want to mention that this is not necessarily going to work for you. And that's because your internet service provider may not allow you to connect to your public IP. However, your friends have to use your public IP and you can use that local host IP I was talking about earlier in the video. If your friends can't join your, using your public IP after you port forward, it's probably your Windows Defender Firewall. And there's a link to a guide in the description on how to fix that alongside a ton of other amazing guides in regards to Minecraft servers. At this point though, you now know how to make a Minecraft server from start to finish, including letting your friends join it for 1.21.7. We will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and I am out. Peace.